Hello all, in this video we are going to do some programming for the GPIO of LPC2378 microcontroller. I'm going to use Scale Microvision 4. Uh, the latest Scale version, it doesn't have LPC microcontroller because it has been already matured and the production has been stopped. But the basics of the microcontroller is still very interesting. So I will first start a new Scale project. So go to project, choose new microvision and keep it somewhere uh, better inside a folder let's call it gpio test as the project name and just save it and he'll ask you for the name of microcontroller go to nxp from there choose lpc 2378 okay and he will ask you to copy this dot uh, s file the starter file and always say yes uh, since we are going to use the Embraid C for programming, when the system starts up, uh, we will have to configure some of the internal registers, such as the PLL registers, memory controller registers, etc. They are all done by uh, this data file. Uh, it is already written in assembly, so that you don't have to worry about any of this uh, startup sequence. So always enable that. After that, like, we can start writing the code, choose an empty file, and the first thing, whenever you write an embedded code for LPC, you will always include the header file, lpc 23 The same header file is used for all LPC23 family. That's why it's written lpc 23 xx If you wish, you can right-click and choose Open Document, and you can see the content of the file. It contains nothing but basically the declaration of all the register addresses. Okay, so you can compare these values with the values in the database, and you'll find like uh, they are exactly matching so that you don't have to memorize uh, any of the addresses of the registers. You can directly use the header file and get it from there. Okay, so let's try to our first code. Uh, first code, we are trying to uh, use the legacy mode of the port 0 and port 1. So remember these two ports, port 0 and port 1, they support both legacy as well as fast advanced version of GPIO, enhanced version of GPIO. So first let's use the uh, legacy mode. And in legacy mode, uh, we have four registers for each port. Okay, so there are two set of IO pin, IO set, IO direction, and IO clear registers. And the addresses of the registers you can see here. So as the first code, we simply want to send some uh, data to one of the ports. And if we have some LEDs connected to that port, those LEDs will be glowing up wherever you are sending one. And the LEDs will remain off wherever you are sending zero okay so uh, let's say like uh, write the data zero x a phi a phi a phi a phi to port zero okay so if you have LEDs connected to port zero 32 of them and uh, they will turn on uh, based on this sequence so this is what we are trying to write let me save it now itself and let me just call it gpio test.c file and you have to add this file to your project so right click project group and choose add files and choose the c code and it will automatically come here fine so let's write it so int main and first and foremost what you have to do is you have to configure the direction of a port before you use it since we are going to write to a port that port should be an output so we need to configure port zero as an output port for that uh, as per the data sheet to the IO register, we are going to use port zero. So IO zero direction register, there you have to store one for each bit. Okay, so this is the address. Again, you don't have to memorize this address. If we come to our header file, if you go to the GPIO section here, uh, here, see? You can see IO direction zero and IO direction one. So we can take IO direction zero and just use it directly. You don't have to declare or anything because it's already defined there. And we can make it FF, 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 FF. I will say like configure port zero as output. Once you have configured it, you can write data there. For write data, you have to use IO pin zero register for port zero. So let's say like, 0x, a5, 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 and we are done. Save your code, you compile, basically you click build or rebuild. Okay, so he compiles and he will tell you how much of your flash he's going to take. It will be sum of this code and read only data, how, how much of the RAM he's going to take, which is basically the sum of ZI data, RW data, and RO data. Okay. 
So we have some basic idea. After that, uh, to check whether it is really working, you have two options. You can either put the compile code, the executable code to the board if you really have a physical chip, or you can simulate and see whether it is working or not. We will always prefer to have a simulation before we send it to the actual board. So let's go to debug and choose start stop simulation. He will give a warning uh, because we have a student version of Keel. So your code size cannot be more than 32K. Uh, that's fine. And when the debug window opens, you can see your C code. At the top, you can see the disassembly. So what the compiler has done is he takes your code, he compiles and he converts it into the machine code. Uh, to the binary code and the disassembler he will actually take that compile code and disassemble it and show you the corresponding assembly so if you click any line on your c code here the corresponding assembly code will be highlighted so basically one line of c code you can see which is a high level language is actually implemented using multiple instructions multiple assembly codes and on the left, you can see all the register contents, your stack pointer, your program counter, all the details here. Uh, we will look at them later. Now let's simulate and see whether it is working. So if you want to see any of the peripherals of LPC, you can go to peripherals and choose the corresponding peripheral. We are interested in GPIO 0 now, uh, which is running in legacy mode. So you can go and choose GPIO port 0 under GPIO slow interface. And here you can see the actual GPIO 0 port. So remember our port, it is consists of the pins, the physical one, uh, they are highlighted here. Uh, wherever you have check mark, that means they are high. Wherever you don't have check mark, basically means they are low. Now behind that, you can see the IO pin register. This is the register and this is the content of the register. And it is not highlighted. That means you cannot directly change them. Instead, you can change the values at the pin. So basically whatever value is in this register will be coming as the pin value whenever it is configured as outer pin. Then we have set register, clear register and direction register. As of now, they are all zero when you reset your system. So let's run and see what happens. You have two options. You, have, you can run your code uh, step by step using the step function or you can run it everything together using the run option here or press F5 on your keyboard. Let's run step by step so that we can clearly see what is happening. So when you run step by step, it is possible uh, here you have clicked somewhere in the disassembly window and he is running from there. Uh, and for reaching the main code, uh, what are you have done here, it may take some time. Okay, so this code is generated by this uh, startup code. That's why you have some additional code there. So you can either keep on pressing or you can press uh, the first line in your C code and there is an option here uh, run to cursor line you can click it then he will automatically run uh, till this this line so the assembly code corresponding to this much he already ran and now he is waiting for you to click next button so we can press now and here you can see as soon as this line is executed which is indicated by green here IO direction register orbits became one because we made them one if you click it once again you can see the IO uh, pins they are getting the value fi 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 and io pin register will also have the same value okay so this is actually getting written into the register and since the pin uh, pins are directly connected to the registers the pins are also getting the same value you will also notice that the io set register his value will be also automatically configured to this one okay so whenever you configure a pin nose output and if you write some value to that your io pin register as well as io set register will have the same value, whichever you are writing to that. This is one way. And once it is done, if you keep on clicking, uh, nothing will happen because he has finished your code and uh, the, the assembly level code, it al already has a loop. So it will keep your processor in that loop. If you want to run from starting again, you can press reset here, which is like you are resetting the processor and you can run again. Again, if you want to go to this line, go there, and just run it that is one option or you can run everything in one shot by clicking run so the system is running and you can see the output has changed your processor is still in running state uh, because he never comes out of that infinite loop uh, after running your code okay so if you want to stop the processor press this one stop and you can reset again you can uh, run again so i guess you have some basic idea about uh, using ports now now let's have more code so 
if you want to edit your C code, you need to stop debugging. So we are stopping, we are going back to the source code and let's write the second code. So here what I need is uh, assume, assume 32 switches are connected to port 0 and 32 LEDs are connected port 1. The LEDs uh, should show the switch position. Okay, so I already have 32 switches, slide switches connected to port 0 and 32 LEDs to port 1. And whenever I change the position of a switch, when I change it from off to on position, the LED corresponding to same bit position which is connected to port 1 should turn on. And it's not enough to happen once, it should always happen. Okay, so once I turn on the processor, whenever I change the switch, it should be always uh, the case. So what you have to do, first you need to read from port 0. Uh, which will give you the switch position then you can write to the port 1 where the LEDs are connected that's the logic we are going to use so port 0 has to be configured as input so we can write 0 there and port 1 so we need to say IO direction 1 we can configure it as output so we write 1 to every bit there now we have to read from port 0 and write to port 1 which basically means uh, this equal to this, if you simply write like this, this will happen only once, okay? So when the system starts up, whatever is the switch position, LEDs will show that. After that, if you change the switch, nothing will happen. So if you want that to happen always, this part, whichever reads from port zero and writes to port one, you'll have to keep it in an infinite loop. While one represents an infinite loop, so your processor, he is stuck in this loop forever. He keeps on reading from this port and keeps on writing to this port so that whenever you change the switch position, you feel like uh, immediately the LEDs have changed, although it takes uh, a few milliseconds of time to do it. Okay, so we are done with that. Again, save, again, rebuild everything. And here he is giving a warning like last line of file ends without a new line. Okay, uh, we can just put a new line there to avoid that warning and we can go debug start stop and run again so this time we need two gpio gpio 0 and 1 go to peripheral slow interface choose gpio 1 and we can keep the processor running now he's running always now you will see whenever i change the values of gpio 0 so here i am clicking to change the values at the pin physically if you have the board you will be switching on and off those switches that's what you are doing and you can see corresponding bits in port 1 uh, they are also immediately changing right so if there were LEDs wherever you have check marks those LEDs will be glowing wherever you don't have check marks those LEDs will be remaining zero now suppose if you go and try to change these values uh, the simulator will give you an error it's basically saying like you configured uh, this port as output and you are trying to change the value basically you are trying to use it as an input which is configured as an output since we are in simulation mode this will be just a warning if you are trying to physically do it that means you configured a port as an output and you try to give an input there uh, what might happen is there could be a short circuit and you might damage the port as well as the microcontroller so we should never do it you configured a port as an output or even a pin as an output and suppose that output is high and you try to give an input there suppose that input is low which basically means you are connecting that pin to ground there is a short circuit between the pin and ground which will damage the pin and the port and probably the microcontroller so we should never do it uh, you should change values only where the ports are configured as input okay with that uh, this is also done now let's simply see how we can use this uh, port zero or GPIOs in a normal programming. So suppose uh, you need to add 10 numbers, first n integers, okay. Add the first 10 integers and show the result on the LEDs connected to port zero, okay. Some, something like that. So you have a program and the output of the program, there should be some way to display it. So as we mentioned, uh, GPIO can be used for interfacing your general purpose input output. So you can connect LED, LCD, seven segment display, keyboard, anywhere, anything that you need to this port. 
anything that you need to this GPIO port. So assume we have LED is connected to port zero and your program is to add 10 numbers. After adding 10 numbers somewhere, we need to see the output to check whether it is right or wrong, right? You cannot go inside the microcontroller and check it. For that, we can use LED as an output device. So that's what we are going to do. So the first part of code, how to add 10 numbers, of course, you might be knowing. So we can initialize sum equal to zero and we can use a for loop uh, i equal to zero i less than 10 number. So let's go from one to 10 and i plus plus. Now you might have used to writing int i equal to one like this. Uh, let's try that. And we can say sum plus equal to i basically means sum is equal to sum plus i. So we have done with addition. After addition, we need to show the result to port zero. Okay, so port zero has to be declared as an output. It should be configured as an output. So let's make it zero x one two three four five six seven eight. Now we made it as an output, and I O pin we will set to this sum and we should be able to see the sum there. Now, if you compile it, it will give an error like identify i is undefined although you have declared it here. So the compiler that is used in Keel, this version, version 4 is C99. Uh, that means it's standardized in 1999. At that time, uh, this declaration is not allowed. You should declare i before the for loop. Okay, so only this is supported, so recompile. Everything fine. So debug start stop. And when you run the code, you can see the output of port zero is this one, which is basically this is three, this is seven. So in hex it is three seven uh, in decimal, which is fifty-five, which is the sum of first and integer. So that's also working. Okay, let's try some other thing. Assume you have an LED connected to P0.0. You have an LED connected to the zero pin of port zero and blink, blink the LED. You just want to blink it. It's not told like at what frequency you blink or something that we may come later. Uh, here, the only problem is you just have to blink it. Okay, so how can you do it? If you have a square wave, uh, and if you connect an LED to that square wave, it will of course blink. Okay, so one way to do it is uh, make this output high, keep it high for some time, then make it low, keep it low for some time, and if you do it in a loop, you will feel like the LED is blinking. So that's the logic we are going to use. And in this case, we have a single LED, but in legacy mode, as you have seen, you always access the port 32 bit at a time. Okay, so even if you want to change only one bit, uh, in most cases we'll be changing all 32 bits. That's not a good design practice. How to do it, uh, we might see later. Uh, but first of all, let's do the simplest way. So I will be writing a high value to uh, port zero, all the bits, then I may wait for some time, then write a low value, wait for some time. Uh, that's the logic we are going to use. So port zero again, uh, let's use it as output, so that is fine. Then we need to make it high. So let's, give it, let's say like I open zero equal to zero x one. Okay, even one is good enough because only one LED is there. Then we need to wait for some time. So we need to create some delay. So how can we generate some delay? We can write some dummy for loop, uh, which will give us some delay because the processor has to execute that for loop, which will be taking some time. So as long as he is executing this code, the output remains one. So you will feel like output is high for some time. So I can say like in i equal to zero, i less than say 1000, i plus plus. What value you put here at this point doesn't matter. Uh, the larger this limit, the longer will be the period of the square wave. Okay. If you put 1000, it will remain high for this much time. If you put it 100, it will remain high for less amount of time. So let's say uh, int i, so I waited for some time. After that, I am making it low, so we'll make it like zero. And again, we will use some delay, so we need to put semicolon here, or empty opening and closing braces, curly braces. And this we want to do forever, then only you'll feel like it's keep on happening. 
what I can do this part this configuration you have to do only once but this making high and low part okay we can put it in a for loop we can put it in an infinite while loop like we did last time so that for indefinite time the output remains high wait for some time then it becomes low wait for some time then again becomes high wait for some time like that so you'll feel like there will be a square wave there so let's try it out debug okay and if you run it uh, it is blinking you can see but it doesn't seem like a square wave right so another option in debugger is a logic analyzer so if you are physically doing this in the lab uh, you will connect a oscilloscope or logic analyzer to port 0, pin 0 and you should be able to see a square wave on the screen. So here we have a logic analyzer. You can choose it and first of all you need to add signal to the logic analyzer if you want to really see it. So go to setup and here you have to choose which pin you want to add. So here there is an option new insert, click it and if you want to see the entire port 0, you need to type port 0 in capital like this and here you need to choose state because it's a like a bus right it contains 32 bits so you need to choose it like that but in our case we just want to see only one bit so you can write port 0, 0.0 which we have seen in the lecture that means bit 0 of port 0 you can just add it and there you can choose bit okay because it's a single bit and close so here itself you can see the square wave is running and if you had a LED, it would have blinked now if you connected it there. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the period of this square wave, let's stop it and let's measure what is the period. So you can choose cursor here. Okay, so he will give you one more cursor. And if I keep it here, you can see the period is approximately, you can see the D, 2.566 millisecond. Now, if I make it uh, 10,000 like this and of course we need to stop debugging and build again okay build okay restart again and run now you'll see like the period has increased okay so now it is like uh, 40.7 millisecond so by controlling uh, this loop variable you can have square wave of different period Okay, so the exact duration of the period depends upon when this loop is converted into machine instruction, uh, like equivalent assembly code, how many instructions are there, how much time each instruction takes, uh, depending upon that, this period is changing. Okay, let's do one more code. Uh, assume you are not using this header file. Okay, so this header file is directly given to you. Because of that, you are able to use it. Assume this is not available to you, how you would have done. Okay, you would have still able to do it. As soon as I remove the header file, uh, he is giving all kind of error. He's saying like, yeah, none of these are declared. But using our standard C, you should be able to do it. So remember, uh, all the ports, these are seen like a memory from the processor perspective all these registers they are also considered as a memory which we call as memory mapped io and you can see each of these registers they have a unique address okay so instead of uh, using these register names here if you are able to directly write to the addresses these values same thing will happen okay during compilation keel is also doing the exact same thing so remember in c programming language wherever you need address memory address we will bring pointers into picture so what i can do is i can declare a pointer here let's say like uh, we'll declare integer type pointer because they are all 32 bits and here in keel wherever you have int uh, they represent 32 bits so let's say like in star it's a pointer i o direction pointer so i declared a pointer i o direction pointer and with what value i will initialize the pointer i will initialize the pointer with the address of i o direction register since I'm using only uh, register zero, I'm just calling it IO direction pointer, or you may want to call it IO zero direction pointer, or IO direction pointer zero, something like that. So I know the address here. See, this is the address. I will directly take the address and I will put it here. 
same way we are using IOPIN also. So let's make one more pointer. Let's call it IOPIN pointer. And we can initialize it with the address of the IOPIN register, which is this one. Okay, now we don't want this guy. So what you need, you need to make IO direction FFFFFF. So what you want to say, okay, this one, the data of the memory, in this case the register pointed by this pointer is 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so always remember to put this star here. If that is not, if you just write like this, this means uh, the content of the pointer is this one, uh, which will represent a register or memory whose address is this one. That's not what we need. We want to make the content of this register to this one. So this is the syntax. And see, I hope uh, you know it. Same way, IO pin. Whenever you want to change IO pin, uh, you can say like star IO pin pointer, star IO pin pointer here. Okay, so here he's just giving a warning pointer to integer yeah so we can make him happy because he is treating it as an integer and this is integer type pointer this will work of course but if you want to remove that warning we can do a type casting this is doing nothing but just to keep the compiler happy okay so we are done with this and if you compile there is no error okay so don't think like without that header file you can't do anything or only thing is you will have to use this absolute addresses and you will have to use some pointers like this and if you debug and if you run uh, the exact same output you will get Okay, so I guess IO pin and IO direction registers are clear to you and most of the things can be done using these registers. Okay, so let's try one thing as I mentioned here. Uh, let's try to generate two square waves on two pins and let's try to have different frequencies at each pin. Okay, so let's say like assume you have two LEDs uh, connected to P0.0 .0 and P0.1. Okay, blink them in such a way that uh, frequency of LED connected to P0.1 is half of uh, that of LED connected to P0.0. So we have two LEDs but they shouldn't be blinking at the same rate. So let's see how to do it. So let's bring back our header file since that will make our life easier. And let's see how to do it. So as you know, we will still have this infinite while loop, but within the while loop, uh, we need to change two LEDs. Okay? But both of them are connected to port zero. So that is the thing. Okay, so here you will see a unique requirement. That means when you are writing to pin zero of port zero, uh, you don't change pin one of port zero. Because if you make both LEDs one at the same time, you will feel like both are blinking at the same rate that you don't want. So basically, you should be able to change only one bit of a port. Okay, instead of changing all 32 in one shot, that's what we have been doing till now you should be able to change only one bit at a time. That is one requirement. And how to have these two different frequency? Assume we have a, okay, assume we have a counter uh, zero to 1000 and zero to 250, we will make LED one high and 250 to 500, we will make LED one zero, same way, uh, 0 to 500 will make LED 2 high and 500 to 1000 we can make LED 2 low. Okay, so this will satisfy the requirement. Uh, unfortunately, you may feel like why don't we write two for loops or why don't we have two while loops to do it. Since we don't have multi threading here, your program can run only one. Uh, thread or one sequence of program at a time. Once you go into this while loop, he's stuck in this while loop. So if I have a different while loop for the second LED, we 
we will never go to that while loop okay. if if we have some operating system if we have multi threading one thread can run this while loop another thread can run the different while loop and you will feel like okay both are happening at the same time although they are time multiplexed here we don't have that option so we'll have to do something like this so let's say like for okay i equal to zero i less than 1000 i plus plus i have this for loop inside the for loop i am simply checking okay uh, same condition let's write some pseudo code now if i is less than 500 uh, we can say like led one is one else we can say okay here we took led two okay so let's say led two is one else led two equal to zero okay so this will make this led to blink like at some particular frequency now let's take the case of other led so here i simply wrote zero to 500 high uh, 250 to 500 low again next 500 to 750 we can make it high and 750 to 1000 we can make it low so in that case okay this guy will be running twice the frequency so if we can say like if i is less than 250 or that is first case 0 to 250 we also need between 500 to uh, 750 i is greater than 500 and i is less than 750 okay so under this case we can say like uh, led one is one in all other case where i greater than 250 and less than 500 or i greater than 750 this led will be zero this is our pseudocode now this led is one led2 we'll have to replace with our io pin register values okay so again let's remove all the pointers here okay and i can of course make it an output so i use zero direction zero okay let's make it output now the question is as i mentioned before if i'm changing led2 i should be changing only p0.1 only one bit at that time we should not be changing p0.0 same way when i am changing this guy i should be changing only p0.0 I should not touch P0.1. So how can we do it? Basically, this is a standard way in any programming. You are given a data, you want to modify only few bits of a data. What you can do is you take that data and wherever you want to modify the bits, uh, those places you end it with zero, wherever you don't want modification, uh, those places you end it with one. So ending with one won't make those bits. Uh, change adding with zero will make those bits to zero they will force them to zero after that that data has to be ordered with the new values that you want to change uh, for example okay so we want to change io pin zero here so i will say like uh, new value of io pin even if it is configured as an output you can still read it okay so that's the good thing uh, so this is still valid you can read from io pin zero so new value of io pin is current value of io pin and in this case i want to modify only the first bit so i will add it p twice okay with everywhere one except in this position so it will be like one two three four five six seven in the last one we want one 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 zero one which is f d so one two three four five six seven eight okay so we add it with this after that we or it so with uh, which value you want to modify it here i want to make it one so everything zero except that one. So we will have zero x 
one two three four five six seven at the last position we will have zero 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 one zero which is two same way here so we first end it with this one and you want to modify only second position and there you want to or with the data uh, you want to modify but there we want to make it zero in this case so effectively what you will be doing is oring with a number where all all bits are zero so of course you don't have to do it uh, this much is enough okay so this will modify only bit one of port zero so same logic we will have to apply here also so first we take and add in this case we want to modify the last bit so we now so we need to add it with e and we can or it with one okay you can just write one so writes one or all zero followed by one here also we can simply write uh, two also no issues it's perfectly fine uh, that is one case and in this case we just add it and you can or with zero which will be exactly same okay so this will be the logic so let's try it out so to the logic analyzer okay we already have p 0, 0.0 here port 0, 0.0 we can add port 0.1 also okay so what he is exactly doing you can notice and you can find out how he is getting uh, 0, 0.0 and 0 0.1 using this expression this should be also bit type so now we have both guys here let's close and let's run and now you can see two square waves are there and see this guy's period is double the period of first one again we are not worried about the exact frequency and all but this is the logic you have to use okay so if you want to modify only some bits of a port this is how you do it in legacy mode and you will see when you come to the enhanced mode uh, this is not the case okay so we have other enhanced option more number of registers available in the enhanced mode of gpio there this can be implemented much easily now in legacy mode again this can be done easily if we are going to use the other registers so we have io set and io clear registers which will help us to do this operation much easily okay so io set register against the 32-bit register and when you write to io set register wherever one is there those pins will become one and wherever zero is there those pins won't change they will retain their previous value okay that's what we exactly need also so here let's come back here and see how this operation can be done using those io set and clear register so let's use io set register okay so we have io set register and i want to change only the first bit other bit i don't want to change so what value you should write all zero except that bit which will be like zero x okay uh, two effectively or you can write one two three four five six seven two right if you expand it to 32 bits you will find like all bits are zero except bit one that means we want to set only bit one don't change other bits so here i want to make bit one zero i don't want to make any modification to any other register in that case you can use io clear so again remember using io clear you are making it zero but when you write some value to io clear whichever bit whichever pin you want to make zero they should be written as one and other bits as zero whichever you don't want to modify so here also you need to write two so same way here i use set zero you will be writing zero bit you want to change so you will just make one here so when you want to clear you want to write one only to zero bit okay so this clear shouldn't be confusing if you want to clear something if you want to make any bit zero any pin zero 
that corresponding bit should be one when you write to that register all other bits should be zero okay so let's compile and debug and when you run it uh, you will get the exact same okay so this is the advantage of setting and clearing register uh, you can selectively make bits high and low without affecting other bits of the port so again they are quite useful okay so with this we will stop this legacy mode uh, sample codes in the next tutorial we can uh, see the details about the enhanced the first gpio thank you